gone through the readings in the Bible, of, in the book of First Samuel, that is chapter 17, verses 32 to 47. And in conjunction with that, we had the Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to verses number 13. And my message today is all about victory. And the subtitle is Overcoming the Goriath of Our Life. We are actually facing multiple of challenges. We are actually facing a multiple of Goriaths in the days that we are living in. But one thing that I'm grateful of is that the Bible in the book of Romans 8 calls us victorious and conquerors. So in the midst of all that you might be in line now, I'm grateful because the Bible has already proclaimed to us that we are more than conquerors. And this morning, God is reminding us that even if you might be facing multiple and a couple of challenges, a couple of difficult situations, which you may refer them as Goriath of the days, there is still an assurance that we are still a conqueror. There is an assurance from the Bible that we are still more than conquerors. No matter what, no matter what you might be facing, no matter what we might, be, we might be going through, there is a way and there are some ways that God can help you to use and to follow so that you can overcome all that you are going through. In our reading the book of 1 Samuel, Saul has just become a king for the Israelites. And this happened at a time when the Israelites requested, more, requested Samuel, who was the prophet by then, to give them a king who will be ruling them like any other nations that were there before. And by this time, the first king to the Israelites was Saul. After Saul was anointed and chosen by God, he served the Israelites very well. He served them with a lot of energy, with a lot of wisdom. He could help them to fight and to go into battles. He could help them to remain strong he could help them in matters of unity and all that. But a time came where the Christian's army popped in and requested that they may have a war, that they may have a fight with the Israelites. By then, the Israelites were not that strong for battles. They didn't have any knowledge. They were not fully equipped in matters of war. And I think these were some of the reasons why they requested to have kings, because they thought that kings could protect them better. They thought that kings could give them more, more, more security. In our chapter 17 of 1 Samuel, now we have the Philistines, and we have the Israelites on the other side. They are all ready for battle. But before they started this battle, they agreed, whoever will win the battle... Whoever will win, either the Philistines or the Israelites, those who will be beaten up, they shall become slaves to those who conquer. And the battle began. All the strongest sons, all the strongest males from the families of the Israelites were chosen to go and represent the community of Israel in this battle. And we see now David, a small boy, being sent by his father Jesse to go and know how his stronger brothers and older brothers are faring in the battle. The moment that David came, he met the situation was not as they, they were thinking when they were back home. He met the Israelites with a lot of fear. He met people who were cowards. The reason being, the Christians had a champion named Goriath who could insult, who could instill and do any other kind of thing so that he can put fear and more fear in the Israelites. Rito did they know that David was the man who was chosen and anointed by God to bring victory over to their lives. They never knew. 
In chapter 16 of 1 Samuel, we see David being anointed to be a king who would replace Saul in years to come. And therefore, God could prepare David in many ways. He wanted him to get more exposure. He wanted him to get more experience of what he, is, he will face. Of the kind of kingdom, of the kind of reign that he shall take to his eyes. David believed in himself. He was no longer happy reasoning to the words that could come out of Goliath. And he said, that's what the Bible has recorded. Who might be this Philistine? Does he know that he is no longer fighting the servants of Saul, but he is fighting an army of the Lord? David asked, did he know? Does he know we are no longer servants of Saul? But we are an army of the Lord. And he offered himself to fight with this champion. What he said, the Bible says that was overhand by the other Israelites. And they learned to King Saul and reported the case. They told him there is a young man down there. And he has just claimed that he is able, he is capable to fight with the man. Then Saul sent that he might be brought forth. After he was brought forth, the Bible says that Saul undermined David out of his appearance. Yes, he was young. He had no strength. He had no qualifications to be in the battle. But, uh, but one thing I'm happy of this morning is that David discerned the enemy they were to fight with. He discerned the kind of enemy that the Philistines were. And he told Saul, I might be young, I might be having no qualifications, but one thing I trust, one thing I believe, is that the God of hosts, the God who conned us, the God who has been with our forefathers, even today, he is still with us. Hallelujah. David declared that with a lot of confidence in him. That God is with them. What do I want to impact into your minds this morning? You might be facing some kind of Goliaths as the Israelites were facing. It is good to discern the kind of Goliath you are facing. Number two, it is good to know that God who called you. That God who created you. David knew his God well. And that's why he testified with a lot of confidence that this God is able to give these Philistines, to give us this champion for the glory of his name. Brethren, this morning, God is calling us that we can know him better. God is calling us that we can recognize of his deeds. David continued narrating to Saul and telling him that he is not only God, he is not only God to our fathers, but he is the mighty God. He is mighty in terms that he is able to fight this battle for us. He is able to fight this battle. All that we need is to walk the battle with him. All that we need is to trust and believe him. All that we need is to take him as our shield. And that's why the book of Ephesians have said that, finally, brethren, be strong in the mighty of the Lord. 
take the whole arm of the Lord. Because in this world that we are in, you shall face a lot of Goliaths. But once you discern your Goliath, once you know whom your God is, once you realize and recognize what he can do for you, I'm here to assure you that you will surely overcome your Goliath. When I say favor, discern the enemy, know your God, realize and recognize all that he can do. Have a different perspective. That is a spiritual perspective. The Israelites could only figure Goriath with their human perspective. And once they figure him with their human perspective, they could, they could see a huge man. They could see a giant. But I thank God because once David came, he didn't figure with a human perspective. He figured with a spiritual perspective which enables him to declare that no matter the size he is, either uncircumcised or not, the God of hosts will give you into our hearts. And we shall surely conquer. And the whole Israelites and the Philistines shall declare that there is God in heaven. May God help us in these challenging times, in these seasons that we are in, that things are working like never before. May God help us. In the midst of all that we are going through, may God help us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you.